Hey, welcome back to Gun Stuff. Today, we want to tell you about the RTS Mini Shield. This Mini Shield is quarter inch steel, AR500, has a special coating on it to help uh, protect it and prevent a little bit of spalling. On the back, you have a nice big handle, super sturdy, big metal handle, won't move. You have a adjustable bungee cord here to snap this on and off quickly if you have to put it on quickly or take it off quickly and everything's bolted to the front through the bolts so nothing's going to be coming loose it also has a big pad here on the back that helps absorb if you get if you start taking rifle rounds one of the cool things about the rts is that a lot of the armor out there is kevlar so it's not rifle rated where something like this is rifle rated not much different than some of your steel plates right but it just takes a little bit different training but what it does is it allows us to be able to for a low cost just a couple hundred dollars be able to put one of these in us every uh, squad car out there and or be able to buy some you know for your home and be able to defend yourself very easily so we're going to go over a couple basics with shields today uh, this thing probably weighs i'm guessing it's probably about 10 pounds uh, it's not real heavy but it's not light either so it's not something you're going to carry around with you a lot it's going to stay in your vehicle it's going to stay somewhere stationary uh, but we're going to go over some of the basics of using something like this Several years ago when I was in law enforcement, served as a shield man on an entry team. So it was something that uh, I had to be proficient with. And we'll talk about a few of the different ways to use this versus what the, you know, the big teams have with the big giant shields and everything. This is something small. It's individual use. It's not meant to protect a whole team or a whole stack coming through. It's just meant to get you to a threat very quickly or through a threat very quickly so we're going to show shoot this we're going to show you some of the uh, uses for it and how to properly employ it instead of just grabbing it and putting it between you and a threat all right first thing we want to talk about is you is put positioning this on your body how do you hold this thing so it's a little heavy it's a little cumbersome it can bump into things uh you're always going to keep it basically in front of you uh so that way when you're moving if something pops out you'll be able to get it up and employ it very quickly but some of the stuff that we see on a lot of different things we see a lot of people using the shield in this capacity here with a metal shield like this if you if if there is hit on this shield if they're shooting back at you and these bullets are impacting the shield it's going to come up it's going to spall and you're going to get some of that in your arm and, and essentially you may lose use of this arm so one of the ways that i like to do this is to uphold the gun just like this uh just over the side so my hand is protected when it's when it's in here uh, if i do catch any spall maybe on my trigger finger if i didn't have this light then i would shove this all the way up to the trigger guard like this but since i have a light i don't want to take a chance of hitting a bump and then my muzzle coming down behind the shield and me uh sending around off just for safety's sake and to make sure I don't do that, I'm going to ride this all the way up to the front where my knuckles are on here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be reducing any chance of getting spall on any part of my arm if my arm is extended. All right, another part of using a shield is presenting a small silhouette behind your shield. Uh, so holding your shield out off your body instead of just letting it rest onto your, onto your gear or holding it onto your gear like this hitting it out there so as it, the difference is this so as I'm sitting here with it in this position here holding it just kind of resting on my body when I hold it out and I position myself behind it as I come out and I put my gun on here I'm tucking my elbow in and I'm, I'm pushing the shield out so I'm holding it away from my body so that I can fit more of my body behind this small shield some of this also will come in getting a little bit of a crouch behind the shield so if i lean over just a little bit and crouch then that's going to cover my pelvic region right here because that's one of the uh things that if you get hit right in the hip you know you're gonna you could have a very good chance of bleeding out and on top of that if it destroys the hip you don't have any mobility you can't use that hip to support your weight so if you lean forward just a little bit get that gun up there you'll be able to cover those and then it only leaves your thighs and that's a little that's going to be able to take a little more shock and you can still fight through a thigh injury and one of the other things i want to address is the angle of the shield so a lot of people you'll see they'll have the shield they'll have it kind of angled down like this have their hand out over and or around so they can see their sights if it's back here keeping this ang keeping this angled up just a little bit uh, because if there's any spall, it's going to hit the shield, it's going to travel up, 
and go over my head and go into the ceiling or whatever. If I have this angled down, if I'm carrying it around and I have it angled down like this, I push all that spall and any, anything that deflects or ricochets or whatever, I push it right down into my hip region and into my thigh. So by doing this, keeping this lean back just a little bit, it's gonna hit here and it's gonna ride up and ricochet over the top. We're gonna to do a quick demonstration for you to show you exactly what that looks like. All right, so our first demonstration here is with this shield hanging at an angle. The two balloons here represent your thighs. I'm just saying, I know what some of you are out there thinking. No, this represents the thighs and all the blood vessels and everything that are running right through there. As you're holding that shield, this is gonna be the first thing. This is gonna be just below your shield if you're holding it properly. So we're gonna fire one round, one or a couple rounds into this. This is just hanging on a T-post with a hook and it's just hanging at an angle so that way you guys can see and get the effect of what would happen to your legs if you're holding it at that angle. All right, so as you can see, it hits that target. There's minimal spalling on here as far as the, as far as the coating goes but you're still gonna have fragments come out. Now I've been on the range and I've seen people get hit with tiny little pieces of copper jacketing that have sliced all the way in to where they had to have full-blown surgeries to where you had to go in and cut and dig deep in there to get that out. Well, if you get one of those in your thigh right there, it's gonna be a bad time trying to manage that bleeding while you're trying to get to that active shooter or trying to respond to that threat with this shield. So if you don't have to put yourself in danger, if you don't have to put it under, then don't. Uh, so now we're going to change it up and show you guys a little bit different angle on this and how this could work. <clears throat> okay, so now we have the shield. T-post is pushed back. Shield is a, is a little bit of more of a uh, angle than what we were talking about before where you're pulling it back towards you so it ricochets up But what I want to show you here is this represents your hand This is the way the way you see most people hold a shield holding the shield in this direction with their hand out in front now You're responding to that threat. You're responding to that active shooter You're placing this arm out in front of that shield if you have a shield That's a a shield that can absorb that like a, a, a Kevlar shield then, or something like that, then you don't have to worry as much about spall, but you can still get ricochets and a little bit of spalling from jacketing and stuff like that. So what do we have going right through here in our arms? You know, we got all those veins and stuff. So if we start bleeding all over the place, odds are we're not gonna bleed out from this, this uh, a small cut right here. We can apply pressure on it. We can still, we can, we can render self aid to that, but am I effective fighter? Am I going to be able to stop an active shooter if I'm busy trying to keep myself from bleeding? Not to mention blood all over everything. So we're gonna shoot this, show you. All right, again, the coating is do has done well, but this you're still gonna get spall. So this, that's what this is about, right? So now I'm going to set it up in a different way to show you how to mitigate these things and to keep yourself from getting from from doing getting in, a, in that position. Okay, now for this demonstration, we have the shield held back in the orientation that I was talking about before. This simulates your hand or your head because you'll be aiming just over the top of the corner of the shield. I have it set up on this side just so that way you can see it better with the camera. I'm gonna put one round in it and we'll see how it protects the balloon. All right, so we see that the balloon's still intact. It hits, it spalls up, it doesn't go down and get your legs. It's gonna hit and it's gonna deflect up. It's gonna go into the ceiling or it's gonna go into the air. That's gonna rain down somewhere else, but it's gonna lose its velocity. It's not gonna be lethal. You know, somebody could still get something in their eye or something silly like that. But that's the best way to mitigate when using something like this. So 
So as you can see, multiple impacts, balloons fine. Uh, this is just a T-post with a with the driver sitting on top of it and the balloon sitting on top of that. Very quick, very easy setup and very easy way to demonstrate this. But as you can see, there's gonna be spall no matter what. So this is one of the better ways to mitigate that to protect you and the people behind you. So I've been peppering this thing with nine mil and a couple different, couple different uh, grain weights, stuff like that. But it says that this is also rated for green tip, so we're going 556 five, green tip. And we're also going to leave the balloon up there just as a demonstration just to show you what kind of uh, protection this offers. All right. So there's a little bit of a dimple on this, right? But I just hit it with green tip. And as you can see the, with the technique we're talking about, balloon didn't pop. Right. These rounds are hitting this and you don't see it you don't see it waving a whole lot. This is just a, a this post is only stuck about six seven inches in the ground and it's just wobbling like this. So one of the added benefits of an RTS shield or uh, another steel shield or anything like that is the fact that it has weight. The amount of weight that this is helps mitigate that impact because you have that 556 five, round doesn't weigh a whole lot but it's going really fast so it has penetrating power but if you stop that penetrating power then it's not putting as much kinetic energy on here as if you were using one of the softer shields or lighter shields so this actually helps absorb some of that recoil so you could go into a room after an active shooter and you could and you know that you could successfully take a couple hits into this shield and still engage and, and win the fight all right, so we got to play with the RTS shield today. This thing is rated up to 308, and this retails for right around four, $450, maybe $500, depending on, on where you get it. This is something that can protect every officer out there or any safety team for a church, anybody who's serious about home defense. This is something that you can put in there. This will not warp. It will not chip, crack, or anything like that, like you have delamination from other ballistic shields if you leave them in trunks of cars or in, you know, your vehicles or your ERT vehicles or anything like that. So this is something that is just a, a solid, reliable go-to. Now, this is not as thick and sturdy, probably, as an AR-500 still target. This is just quarter inch, so it's not meant to be beat on every day, but it's going to stop those bullets for you. And this is now going to live in my Jeep. So this is going to stay in here with me all the time. So that way I've got something to uh, use here since we've already shot it up. But this, I trust this to protect me against any other threats. So I would reach out to the people in charge of your training, your safety, your gear, all that stuff, whatever it is, what team you're on or whoever you work for, and request some of these RTS plates.